Yo guys, what's up? It's Inflexius. Today we're playing Jackson to Cassante Top. Level 1, what we want to do is try to get the level 2 push while not taking too much Q harass. So I'm going to be dodging in and out of his Q range here to try to fake it out, like that. And if he lets me get too close, I'm going to go for an E-trade. Like this. So then we go get that last auto, and then we dodge the Q3. And now the push is pretty much secured. We're going to get level 2 a little bit before him. And once you hit level 2, trading with Cassante gets really easy in these early levels. Now we're going to wait for him to use his Q3, and then we're just going to jump on his head. Level 2, the trades are pretty easy to do. Like this, he Ws towards us, so we can just leverage our lethal tempo and just auto-attack him all the way to his tower. There we go. Just keep auto-attacking him until he's out of auto-attack range. Now we need to crash this wave here to secure our three-wave crash and cheetah recall. And we also need to crash the wave here because if we don't, then it's going to freeze right in front of Cassante's tower. And that's a terrible spot for the lane to be in because Cassante has this habit of just kidnapping you into his tower. And that's not great. So off to lane we go. We have our ruby crystal. So now we have ourselves a health lead and an item lead. Now... We need to thin this wave though, because for two reasons. One, this creep wave is way too huge, we cannot fight him in that, the creeps will obliterate us. And two, he actually has more stats than us right now because he's a level up on us. As soon as we hit four, we will start trading with him, but we don't want to trade with him until we hit four. There we go, now we have our stats matching his. Now we can go for an E-trade and disengage here. Now he's using his, he, we waited out his Q3, and now we can start thinning the wave a little bit more here, just so that he can't, you know, crash it. We'll try to fake out his Q here before jumping on him. There we go, fake out the Q, jump on his head. There he E's away. And that's the thing about Cassante, is that if he has a minion to E2, his E range gets increased, so that lets him actually get out of our E range. But if he doesn't have a minion to E2, then... His E doesn't take him far enough to get out of our E range, so just keep that in mind. So now we're just going to see if we can set up a gank for the Leeson here, land the stun so that Leeson can secure his Q. And once Leeson lands the Q, it's pretty much over. Zack shows up as well, but Cassante's already dead. What's Zack going to do? So he just decides to dip. Fair enough. So now we get our double longsword. I TP back here because I thought Cassante would TP back because he's losing so many minions. But he ends up just not. He just decides not to, so he loses... So many creeps for that. Now at this point, Cassante is level 6. At level 6, you don't really want to be trading with your E willy-nilly like this, because uh, then Cassante ults you through a wall and just uh, cancels your Q with his Q3 and then just forces your flash and uh, freaking obliterates you. So at this point, Cassante is just trying to crash the wave. We're a bit chunked out, so we don't really have the means to stop him. We go for an E-trade here, but um, he just E's away and now he can just use the minions to crash the wave here. So that kind of scuffed our lane. So what happened there was I used my E before Cassante used his R and you can't really do that unless Cassante has no way to force the all-in on you. So going for the E trade there was fine actually but I needed to position myself to make sure that I couldn't get E through the wall because he wouldn't have been able to force an all-in on me there by just R'ing me. I was too close to my tower, right? The only way he forces an all-in on me there was if he kidnaps me through the wall, which is dead, and that's which he did, and that's why it got scuffed so quickly. So I really like Demolish, because when you crash a big wave into your opponent's tower, you can do this. And it's just a free plate, and it's really nice. Now, versus Cassante, I probably shouldn't have done that, because Cassante is really good at kidnapping you under his tower, so... It's probably a bit too risky to do versus him specifically, but versus a lot of champions, it's a good time. So, Zack comes in, misses his E, but it manages to land the Q. Cassante just ults me into the wall, and I'm trying to get away, but it's just CC and CC and damage, and Senna and Karthus ult just to make sure I get sent back to Fountain. So what happened there? Well, I used my last ward to ward Rift Herald like a good teammate, to make sure that they couldn't sneak it off of us. But turns out, Jax is pretty killable when he doesn't have any ward hops available to him, and I didn't respect to that, so that's my bad. Now, I should be using my E to trade here. It would save me some minion damage, and just give me a better trade overall. 
Because Cassante's ult is on cooldown. We're not scared of Cassante if his ult is on cooldown. He has no chance of fighting us if his ult isn't up. Now, I'm shoving the wave here to secure lane prio so that Lee Sin can do Herald safely. Now, I don't know where their enemy jungler is. So I'm just going to stay super far back and just let the wave come to me. I don't need to risk anything. I can just let the minions come to me. Now, I can try to set up a freeze here, maybe. So I go trade on the Cassante here. I don't use my E because I remembered what happened last time. Except um, Cassante lands his Q3 and then uh, obliterates me. What happened there? Well, I should have used my E in that trade. But like I said before, position myself that I don't get ulted through the wall. Because what happened that time was the minions just obliterated me. He had way too many minions. Now... My TP's up, I don't use it until the enemy team cannot disengage from me TP'ing. So I wait for just Zach to E in and commit, and then I TP in. Now I go in to try to cut them off. I decide to try to jump on the Riven here. She becomes untargetable because of Senon's garbage. I then ward hop. Jin lands a really nice W. Auto W the Riven, finish her off. Now we start collecting honey fruit here, because Cassante is behind us. So I try to jump onto the center here, but she's out of range, so I immediately jump up back onto the Cassante, start beating on him. Zack cues me, I bonk him, put him in passive, wait for my W to come back, Q auto W the Cassante to finish him off. Now we can finish the Zack off as well. Go on the center here, she flashes, I try to flash after her, but she made a lot more distance in the time it took me to flash the wall than I thought she would. She procced lethal tempo, I think. Not lethal tempo, sorry, fleet footwork. Which gave her a bunch of movement speed. A lot more than I was expecting her to have, anyway. So, at this point, I have my Divine Sunder. Cassante has his Iceborne Gauntlet. We have our item spikes, both of us. Cassante Q is at me. I go in, just trade on him a little bit. Proc his Bone Plating. Now we just let the wave push to us here. Cassante has a, has a slight XP lead on us over here. So we just need to be respectful of that. But we can leverage our Divine Sunder. And just keep taking the short trades and we'll be fine. Now we don't really want to jump on him until our E is up. He EQs at us, now we can jump on his head. He ults us through the wall here. And that's fine, we're not- we're fine with this. Because we have our E up. If you have your E up, you're not scared of Cassante. You win the fight. So you see, that's fine. If he wants to ult us when our E is up, that's perfectly fine. It's when our E is down that we have to be scared. So we crash the wave, we can recall here. I consider going down to the dragon fight here, but then I figure that it's probably going to be over by the time we get down there, so there's no real point. Might as well just go back top lane here. Cassante's ult's probably on cooldown, so we can go for an E trade here. And just back off, maybe look for something, just walk around the map, you know, there's not really anything to do. So we just crash the waves here and... Really just walk around the map, maybe look for a play on the Riven. Now, I see Cassante moving down, and I see Riven moving up, and I realize that, uh-oh, this is not really a position we want to be in, so I decide to try running, and uh, then there's a Zac as well, my bad, good cripes for not sitting under my tower, I guess. So I really want this cannon, so I'm going to try to go for it, but Cassante CCs me off of it, and there's a Zac as well. Okay, fine, I guess I won't have the cannon. Jeez. So I just recall here. I'm a bit um, low on resources, so I decide to just see. Maybe I wanted to recall there and hopefully get back before Cassante takes the tower, and somehow Cassante didn't actually destroy the tower before we got there, so that was a surprise to me. So Wave is pushing towards us. I decide to go into river here, get the scuttle. Back up to top lane, catch the wave. And then we see Cassante bot lane with just a whole team fight going on. So we TP in. We can ward hop here, try to catch the Cassante. He flashes over the wall, we flash after him, he E's to the Karthus. We Q onto the Cassante, Q auto W, R. Put Zack into the passive, get away from the Karthus passive because we're pretty low on health. About two Karthus Qs and we're probably dead. So I'm just waiting for the Karthus passive to wear off before going to finish off the Zack. So that's a one team fight, good stuff. Now I ping to push down bot lane with Jin because I have demolished, so we can actually take the tower before anybody can come stop us. You know, get our rune value there. And now I sell my Corrupting Potion to get the Black Cleaver here because Dragon's spawning soon and I want to be as strong as possible for the potential Dragon fight that's coming up. So I push down bot lane here because 
You ideally want to have the two lanes closest to the neutral objective you're contesting to be pushed out if you can help it. So we're just doing our part pushing out down bot lane there. We go mid lane, but unfortunately team got a bit caught there. So we're just going to go back down bot lane, keep shoving here. Now we're going to back off here because we don't know where their team is. We have no vision on any of them and dragons up. So they might be looking to make a play on us. And we just see four bot lanes. So fair enough. I guess our guess was correct. So Lee kind of looking for a play here. I decide to go in the center here because I'm very confident that I can kill a center and then I can probably get out. However, Kasante kidnaps me and then I get Iceborne Gauntlet slowed and super creep blocked so I couldn't actually freaking get out of there, unfortunately. But team looks like they're looking for a fight here. And we forced Kasante ult and we went one for one so it's very possible we win the fight here. Seraphine lands a really nice three-man ult to counter the Zack engage there. Jin opens up the shooting gallery, guns down the Karthus here. Lee Sin kicks the Kasante into the tower, and Jin just finishes the Kasante off. And there we go, really good job by the team there. And that team fight secures us Dragon. Now we want to go straight back down to bot lane here, to split push on the opposite side of the map that Baron is, which is the only neutral objective that's up right now. So we just push out the wave here, and then we can go into their jungle, maybe see if we can steal something, and I find a blue buff, don't mind if I do. Go back down to bot lane here. At this point, we're stronger than the Kasante, so I jump on him here, get the E trade and back out because I really don't want to get altered by Kasante when our E is on cooldown. He uses his Q3, our E's back up, so I jump on him here again. He's going to take a lot of damage from our E, W, and R because he has very little MR. He outplays our R here, unfortunately, but that's fine. He ults us, but we have our E up. So we can just kind of outplay him here by just doing the all auto attack and W mash. Our team wins a team fight mid, so we can just push down bot lane here, maybe look for the end. And uh, they just FF. And uh, yeah, that's that. Well, hope you guys enjoyed the video and hope to see you in the next one.